Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Coach Paul Tortorella Show. Jack Benedict here. We talk IUP Crimson Hawks football after a win on Saturday over Gannon, a 42-26, to and that ices the Western Division title for the Crimson Hawks, and they'll be in the championship game later on, but one thing at a time. Mercyhurst is up next. Coach, let's talk about the win over Gannon. We had talked about all year's slow starts. Well, not this time. You got off to a big-time start, and with before you know, it was 35 nothing at the half. So you had to be happy with the way your crew started this game. Well, yeah, we wanted to get off to obviously a good start because, uh, you know, they're, they're a predominant rushing team, obviously, with the leading rusher in the country. So we felt like if we could get the lead on them, uh, they would have to throw the ball a lot more, kind of play into our hands. We could take the running back out of the game a little bit, which we did. And uh, so it was imperative. We got off to a good start, and you know, late in the half, we were up 21 nothing, and uh, we got a big turnover uh, with uh, Jordan Divens' interception, and then went into the half 28 nothing with momentum. Yeah, almost looked like uh, that Jordan was the receiver on that particular play. So he was in the right spot at the right time. Well, he actually read it, and uh, not only was it the right spot at the right time, he he really just read the play. And uh, we had a lot of pressure on the quarterback, made him hold the ball. The guy probably should have just thrown it into the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, and he still tried to get it in there. And it was a uh, real good play uh, by uh, Jordan, realizing, you know, that it was a screen. And I think we had, you know, this right there on third down, we, we had called a timeout before when we had him backed up, uh, hoping to stop him and make him punt from being backed up. And they had made the first down. So we were pretty much uh, – reserved on going in up 21-0, but then they kept trying to uh, throw the ball. They threw the screen and we picked it off. Mm -hmm. We had talked before we talked last week, of the, it was imperative that you stop their rushing game, and you did on Mark Jones, 91 yards, but he really wasn't a factor. And all along, uh, you guys were swarming to him because he, he's a tough character, no question. Well, he's he's hard to tackle one on one. So you got to you, you know you have to get a lot of uh, hats to the ball, so to speak. We had done that. We actually the, the early in the game, we, we, you know, Anthony Davis made a big hit on him and forced a fumble. Uh, I think that was huge. Uh, we never really let him get into the secondary where he he gets his big runs. He had a couple runs in the second half when we were playing pass. Uh, you know, to get to, I think, 89, 90 yards for the game. But when we went in at halftime and he only had 30 yards rushing, we felt like we were in good shape and they would have to throw the ball most of the second mm -hmm. half. What do you tell a team at halftime when you're up 35 to nothing? Well, you got to keep playing. Uh, you know, you want to try to finish, you know, no matter what the score is, you want to finish the game the right way. I thought we had a really good third quarter and then the fourth quarter got sloppy, kind of took our foot off the gas a little bit on offense. Um, you know, we took a knee at the end of the game, but there were a couple series early in the fourth quarter where we made some mistakes on offense. Uh, we had a screen, we had an easy first down, and Allen tried to reverse field and go the other way, which is a definite no-no on that play. That's where the, the defenders all are. That's why we're calling the screen to, to get the ball outside. But, uh, you know, and then we had a stupid penalty when we thought we had them stopped on one drive, and then we missed a sack. We lost contain on another drive. So, it got sloppy there, you know, defensively the defense was really upset about, you know, giving up points in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought we played a great three quarters, the fourth quarter, not so much. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at the stats, uh, red zone, five for six. That, uh, that produces points, no question, right? <laughs> well, I mean, if you watch the Steeler game last night, you know, the Lions had 500 yards of total offense and only scored 15 points and didn't score a touchdown because the Steelers played great in the red zone. Well, we look at it both ways. On offense, we need to score touchdowns in there. And then on defense, we need to uh, stop them and make them kick field goals mm -hmm. and so forth. So red zone was big offensively. Uh, you know, our whole thing going into the game, two things. We, we wanted to run the ball and stop the run. We did that. I think we had a little over 200 rushing. They only had 100. And we won the turnover battle 2-0, to zero, so we were plus 2 there. Those were the two critical mm -hmm. statistics that uh, we thought would be a, be a big factor in the game. Mm -hmm. Lenny was uh, 20 for 25, 182 yards. Three touchdown passes all to Chris Wiesner. Boy, what a player, what a find he's been. I know he missed early in the year, and uh, you guys missed him, but... He had three touchdown receptions, but probably overlooked is the way he plays on special teams. Huh? Just everything's overlooked. Not by the him. coaches. No, not at all. But 
he's one of those guys, you know, we have all these wide outs and, and you just kind of forget about him. And uh, obviously three touchdown catches. One was a great catch off a deflection, uh, great ball skills. Uh, ran a great route on a great throw from Lenny, and then Lenny did a great job avoiding a, a sack and improvising, and then you know Chris did a good job uh, getting open off the scramble, and then he did a great job in, in our spe- – he's probably our best special teams player. So, uh, you know, he made a great play on the one kickoff coverage, and he, he, he's really good on, on the punt return team and uh, kickoff return team. So. He's, he's a real valuable asset to the team. Yeah, no question. I mentioned to you before we started here, when you take a look at the stats, you have five guys who have rushed for 200 or more yards. That includes Lenny. It's what a luxury it have, is to have Anderson, Evans, Bullock, Brown, because you pulled Samir early. I know you, you said you wanted to get him 100% healthy. Uh, you know, as a defense, you're looking at guys keep coming at They're all different too, aren't they? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You know, we, we were worried about one running back, you know, Jones. Uh, the teams that we play, you know, they're first going to worry about Samir, but then you've got three different breeds coming at you with Malik Anderson, Dwayne Brown, Justice Evans, different styles. Uh, thought Dwayne had two really big runs in the game. Uh, one, he got hit probably a yard past the line of scrimmage. He ended up gaining 12 yards. Uh, I think he did a good job, too. He had two good punt returns also. So we're getting a lot out of uh, Dwayne. Uh, Justice Evans, Dom McNeil in the return game. Dom had a couple real good kickoff returns Saturday. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've used a bunch of different guys in both punt and kick return. Uh, after Saturday, probably looks like we'll settle in with uh, Dwayne and, and Mike uh, on the punt returns and then uh, Dom and uh, Dwayne in the kickoff return game. Mm-hmm. You like to have two guys back there? Usually we don't, but you know, late in the year with the weather, wind, uh, we needed to have two definitely because of how Gannon kicked the ball. I thought that was huge. Coach Smith runs a punt return team. He had a great plan. Uh, we didn't let the ball hit the ground. You saw where Gannon only had one guy back, and they let the ball hit the ground two or three times. So uh, when you get a punter or an operation that they spray the ball a lot, you like to have two guys back so the ball doesn't hit the ground. Mm-hmm. All right, Coach Campolo's had to restructure the offense a little bit. Something – that he hasn't had to do too much in, in past years. But uh, you had uh, Rocco out, Esposito, mm-hmm. and uh, Devon Barnes was in there. He hurt an ankle. Uh, what about the prospects for this week? Again, when we talk, it's early in the week. Right. But you may have to reshuffle a little bit again. Well, we, we have now, it seems like, with some of the injuries we have, we, we, we actually have four tackles. And we're really thin now at, at guard. We're, we're really down to two guards. So uh, there may be a situation where – you know, we may move one of the tackles inside the guard, depending on, on the status of uh, Barnes' situation. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see how the week plays out. Uh, we do have a couple tackles who can go into play guard if we have to do that. Yeah. Okay, Mercyhurst is up next on the road. Talk about them. We're running into the same situations. You're playing a team that's under 500, but when you look at it, that, that record is very, very deceiving. That's probably the most deceiving record in the conference. Uh, they've lost three games, I think, by three points or less. Last week they ended up losing to Cal by 10, but they're winning by four with five minutes to go in the game. They get a punt blocked, uh, throw a pick six for a touchdown at the end of the game. You know, we say this a lot, but it, it's really true. And when you look at Mercyhurst's record, you could flip it two or three games the other way, no question. You know, three games losing by less than three points. Uh, probably as well-coached team as there is in the league. You know, Marty Schatzel's been there for a long time. Uh, they do a great job in all three phases. Very disciplined. They don't usually beat themselves. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to go up there and play a really good football game, uh, clean game, uh, win the turnover battle. Uh, because they won't, they'll, they'll play really hard. They always have, hmm. and uh, they, they won't give it to you. You know, uh, I've heard you mention sometimes after practices along the way, being aware of other teams catching up to you, you know, uh, as IUP has been nationally ranked for so long. Number one loss this week, Northwest <laughs> Missouri State. <laughs> Pittsburgh State beats them. Right. Uh, that's a rarity, but it proves that anybody can be beaten at any time, right? Well, usually that's a big rivalry, 
you know, they used to play that game at Arrowhead Stadium. Yeah. Well, I guess Northwest was on the road at Pittsburgh State. Pittsburgh State, I think, is a 500 team this year, too. Uh, they had an injury at quarterback Northwest, so they were playing their second team quarterback on the road. Uh, you know, winning at home is, uh, I think, a little bit of a, a, an added thing in regards to just like we've won 16 in a row at home now. Uh, it can kind of get you over the hump if you get in one of those games that are nip and tuck. When you're on the road and you get into one of those four quarter games, uh, that's when you, you, you can get knocked off. And, I, you know, obviously we talked about it when we went to Clarion. Uh, Northwest, I guess the same thing really kind of happened to them at mm -hmm. Pittsburgh State. And they, they, I think, this week have to play a, another team in their league that's undefeated, Fort Hayes State. So they may have been looking ahead also. That's the other thing you got to worry about. Uh, our situation kind of is right in front of us. we we got to worry about playing the next game. We've always said that, but it's even more so critical now because uh, you play the next game. If you win that one, then the next one even becomes bigger. So uh, – we just need to worry about what we do this Saturday up at Mercyhurst and can't worry about what's down the road. Mm -hmm. Basically, you've been a pretty good road team, though. Guys seem to like to play on the road. Well, I think the style of play that we play is, is good because uh, you can sometimes get into bad weather games. Uh, you, you can face different kind of styles and matchups, you know, with teams. And then when you get on the road, uh, you've got to be able to play, you know, like offensively. If we've got to throw it to win it, we can do that. If we've got to run it to win it, we can do that. If we've got to play great defense to win the game, we mm -hmm. can do that. Uh, if we have to play great on the special, you know, we have three phases that can win games for us. Uh, we're not a, just a heavy offensive team, heavy defensive team. And we're teams, you know, I always talk about our, our game travels well. You know, we, we could play in bad weather, nice weather. We got a lot of depth. Mm -hmm. So if we're playing, you know, like we did up at Slippery Rock and, you know, some of the road games we've played and even some of the home games we've played in a lot of hot weather, we've wore teams down in the second half because of our depth. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a phase early in the year that, that helps us. I don't think we're going to have to worry about it being very warm up at Mercyhurst this weekend. <laughs> but by the same token, you could run into bad weather up there. Or wind. And wind, and you, you've got to have different ways that you can win the game. And uh, I, I think that plays into why we have as much success as we have on the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's, it's in line, as you said. And the guys know, and you got the Western Division title. That was one thing, and now you move on and uh, play it from there. What, what do you believe uh, is the key to the bottom line to this week's game, though? I, I really think, you know, going back to when we played Ashland at the beginning of the year, the first game of the year, our main thing was we have to play the right way. This is a team that doesn't make a lot of mistakes. They will not give you the game. I think Mercyhurst is a, a version of that. They do what they do. They are, they're not going to really throw a lot of surprises at you. They play the way they play. They don't give you the game. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to go ahead and, and earn it and take it. I, I think it'll be crucial that uh, we win the turnover battle. And, and really, it, it's, it's kind of to the point now in this season where we have got to run the ball and stop the run. I know football's changed a great deal. You play a lot of spread teams. Mercyhurst is a, a lot like we've been in the past here at IUP. Mm -hmm. Two back, tight end. Uh, two tight ends. So that's another thing this week that we've got to be able to make the changeover on defense to playing a team that's going to have a fullback in the game, that's going to have tight ends in the game. It's a, a really a whole different style of offense. Mm -hmm. So being able to uh, work this week against that type of offense will be crucial, mm -hmm. you know, in the preparation. But, uh, you know, it's a game that we're going to have to earn. When it, when, when it push comes to shove, they're not going to give it mm -hmm. to us. That's your bottom line. Good luck on uh, Saturday against uh, the Lakers, okay? Appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. Okay, Co Coach Tortorella. It's a noon kickoff in Erie. It's a nice drive, you know. It's fall. Why not see the game, you know, and listen to the game, too. That's our coverage for this week. So IUP goes for its 10th of the year. Noon Saturday, we'll have the radio and TV coverage for you. For the coach, this is Jack Benedict. Have a nice evening.